Hi, my name is Kira Baird. I'm a physical therapist here at the hospital. And I'm Allison Hubert. I'm an occupational therapist. So the physical therapy team at the hospital is made up of physical therapists as well as physical therapy assistants. Our primary goal is to ensure that you can safely return to and function in your home. This will include addressing bed mobility, transfers, walking with an assistive device, and practicing stairs if needed. We will also address the strength and range of motion around your new joint. And as occupational therapists, our main focus is to help you resume your activities of daily living. We work on dressing, bathing, toileting, transfers in and out of, or often on the commode and shower. We provide education for home safety, use of adaptive devices, and or bathroom equipment. Now before hospitalization, there are some things that you could do to prepare your home. Things such as making sure that you remove throw rugs, ensuring that the chairs that you will be sitting in do not have wheels or swivels, tucking in the bedding corners of your bed, installing night lights as we're getting more into our winter season, clearing the pathways around your bed and bathroom, removing any safety hazards, and making sure the things that you need are within easy reach. We also want you to obtain the necessary equipment for being able to do things for yourself more easily and arrange for any help at home if you might need it. Pre-cooking and freezing food ahead of time is always a good idea and making sure that you have um, walker trays if you need it as far as being by yourself at home to get things safely to and from your kitchen counters to a seat, safe seating area. As you prepare for surgery, also keep in mind that exercising, including walking daily before your surgery will help speed up your recovery. Motion is lotion, so we want you to move to feel better. Make sure as you pack for your trip here to the hospital that you have nice loose fitting clothing such as athletic shorts and t-shirts and shoes with good support are helpful that have closed heel areas. Exercise after surgery has numerous benefits to include restoring normal range of motion, increasing strength in the muscles surrounding your new joint to provide support to that joint, and decreasing recovery time by increasing blood flow to the surgical site and reducing pain and swelling in the area. Exercise in the first three weeks after a total joint replacement is critical in speeding your recovery and allowing you to return to the activities you love to do. You will be provided with an exercise handout that we will expect you to become familiar with and begin performing independently. While in the hospital, our goal will be to see you one to three times a day between both PT and OT. Our visits will focus on functional activities to increase your mobility and safety. While pain cannot be completely avoided, we will work closely with your nurse to try to schedule our visits after you receive pain medicine. We also have ice packs available that can be useful in decreasing pain and swelling following PT and OT visits. Prior to discharge, we expect all of our patients to be able to get in and out of bed independently, walk approximately 150 feet with a walker or other appropriate assistive device, navigate the number of stairs you will need to navigate at home, and be independent with your home exercise program. For patients having their knees replaced, we hope to have you bending your knee at least 90 degrees. For patients having their hips replaced, we will expect you to be able to verbalize and follow all of your hip precautions. Speaking of hip precautions, let's talk about the different hip precautions. If you are having your knee replaced, you can ignore the information in this slide and the next one. For those of you having your hips repla replaced, this information will be very important. The precautions you will have after your surgery will depend on which approach your surgeon performs during surgery. With the posterior approach, you will not be able to bend your surgical hip past 90 degrees, rotate your surgical leg inward like pigeon toes, or cross your legs. You will need to be aware of these movements while in bed, sitting up, and standing with your surgical leg planted. With the anterior approach, you will not be able to cross your legs, rotate your leg outward, or extend your hip backward. Again, the specific precautions you receive will depend on your surgeon and will be taught to you multiple times after your surgery. Now let's talk about equipment. These are the things that you may need at home to help make life a little bit easier. We have options such as front wheeled walkers to make it safe for you to mobilize, tub transfer benches or shower chairs for you to have a seat while you're in the shower bathing, elevated toilet seats or bedside commodes, as well as toilet safety frames. There's multiple options for bathroom use at home depending upon what your bathroom setup is like, which we go into detail and discussion while you're here during your hospital stay. Other items of adaptive equipment that are helpful for things like lower body dressing include this slide, which is reachers, sock aids, long-handled shoehorns and bath brushes, dressing sticks, and elastic shoelaces. This specific equipment is important for those having total hip replacements because we do not want you breaking your posterior hip precautions by bending forward to reach your feet. 
That's why we will go through each item individually and provide you a hip kit of each of these items for you to practice and take home with you at discharge. Now, where would we obtain this equipment? When you, can get, when you come to the hospital and you have a total hip replacement, we can provide you with the total hip kit. Um, if you choose to obtain some of the bathroom equipment prior to coming to the hospital, you can look into places such as Access Alaska for loan equipment or medical supply companies in town such as ProCare. Other stores in town such as Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, Walgreens, Fred Myers, and Safeway have uh, pharmacy sections that do have some of these items available for purchase as well. As far as insurance and equipment, unfortunately, Medicare does not cover bathroom equipment. So most of that must be purchased on your own, which is why we recommend either a loan closet or if you have something already to utilize what you have. But you are able to check with your insurance company prior to surgery to determine if they will cover or not cover any specific equipment that can be ordered or obtained ahead of time. Insurance companies such as VA, Medicare, Medicaid, Chief Andrew Isaac, or private insurances all tend to be different, so it's important to check ahead of time to make sure that you know what is expected of you as far as obtaining equipment. Switching gears a little bit, here's a quick video explaining and demonstrating the proper way to get in and out of a vehicle after a total joint replacement. Hi there, my name is Rachel and I'm a physical therapist here at the hospital. And I'm here today to demonstrate how to safely get in and out of a vehicle after you've had a total hip replacement and therefore need to follow those hip precautions. Uh, firstly, when you come to the car, there's a few things you want to make sure you adjust prior to getting in, and that is the seat. So make sure that the seat is actually pulled back as far as you can to allow space for you to transfer in, as well as make sure the seat is reclined back to allow you to get in without breaking that hip precaution. So I will demonstrate. Using your walker, you're going to uh, back up to the vehicle, okay, as close as you can until you feel your legs touch the back. From here, we highly recommend that you do not hold the door as it can move and may fall back on you and causing a fall. So we recommend that you reach back and hold either the dash, okay, or the door jam, but just be careful that this door does not shut. Uh, so this is a good spot if you have someone with you to hold the door to ensure that it does not move during this transfer. So one hand on the dash, the other hand can reach back, okay, and hold the edge of the seat. So I'm gonna demonstrate this video as if my right hip just was replaced. So I'm going to first bring that right foot forward, okay? With my hands propped, slowly sit back so I can get to the edge of the seat so I keep that angle or that 90 degree at my hip. From here, you can scoot back into the car as far as you can, leaning backwards. From here, you then can slowly transfer and twist your body to get that leg in. Then to get the leg out, I'm going to reverse, making sure I'm leaning back to not break that hip precaution. I can then hang on to the handle here. I can hang on to my dash and slide my hip out to where it touches and then carefully lean forward Again, making sure not to break that hip precaution. So while I transferred in, transferred out, be careful as well not to bring that leg across your midline or have your legs crossed at any point. Once you're here, you can bring the walker close to you. And again, either have your hand on something stable, so the dash and the, or the seat, not on the door, okay? Uh, or you can have one hand on the walker as long as one hand is on that stable surface. With my leg kicked out, gently lean forward and stand up. Again, not breaking that hip precaution. If you had a knee replacement, we recommend that you follow this same maneuver. All, as well, we realize that you do not have hip precautions by getting in and out of the vehicle by backing up in this manner will make your transfer much easier and safer. And then now we'll have a video on tub transfers for when you are clear to shower to give us more specific instruction of how to transition over the side of a tub. 
So if you have a shower stall, this is going to be the easiest way to get in and out to uh, bathe. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, if you have a, uh, if your threshold is flush, that's obviously not going to be an issue for you. But however, if you do have a little lip um, on the bottom of your threshold like this one, um, I'm going to show you how you're going to safely step in and out. The one way that you can do it is back up until the heels touch on the outside of that ledge. And you're going to step back with your non-affected leg first. So if I had um, surgery on my left leg, I'm going to step back with this right leg and then bring your operated leg in last. And if you have grab bars, you can hold on to those. If you have enough room inside your walker, um, and if your balance is good enough, you can bring that walker inside with you, so that way you can turn to take a shower with the walker. The only thing is you're going to have to be able to dry it off when you get out. Um, and, and then to come out, if you have the walker, you're going to bring that walker out. Or if you're just leaving the walker on the outside, you're going to leave that walker on the outside of the shower. And now this time you're going to step out with your operated leg first and then step out with your unaffected leg last. So the second way to get into your shower if you don't feel comfortable going backwards is to sidestep in and out of the shower. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come alongside the edge of your outside edge of your shower and then angle up your walker if you can. Sometimes you may need to straddle it over a toilet that might be here. And what you're going to do is we're going to sidestep in. So one thing I want you to keep in mind is if you've had a total hip replacement, you want to make sure that you are not bending your knee higher than your hip level um, or turning your toes in. So one safe way to do this when you're stepping in. So I'm going to either put my, I'm going to have you put your hand on the wall or you can use a grab bar if you have a grab bar in that area one hand on the walker. So I'm going to step in with my unaffected leg first and then I'm going to bend at my knee and bring my operated leg in. And then to and then you can if you've got enough balance you can sidestep over and take your shower or if you don't feel like your balance is good enough after you've had a hip or a knee uh, replacement, you can always get an adjustable height shower chair to sit down on. Now to come back out, you're going to just do everything in reverse, so you're going to sidestep over. So say this is my right side, so I'm going to bend at my knee, I'm going to bring that leg out, make sure I have enough room to bring my left foot out onto the floor, and I'm going to step out. So if you don't have a shower stall at home and all you have is a tub shower combination and or if you live alone and your balance is not good, um, I recommend that you uh, get this type of piece of equipment which is called a tub transfer bench where as you can see two legs sit on the outside and two legs sit on the inside. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do this. Now I want you to keep in mind that you will have hip precautions. So again, you want to mind those three big precautions. No crossing your legs. No uh, turning your operated toes in. And no uh, bending past 90 degrees or bringing your knee up higher than your hip. So what you're going to do, you're going to face the tub, the, the tub bench so it's facing uh, your faucet that's coming out. And you're going to walk up, you're going to turn around. So for purposes of demonstration, I'm going to show you as if I've had a right total hip replacement. You're going to bring your operated leg out first. You're going to reach back with one hand, and you're going to slowly sit down, sliding your right leg forward. And now what you're going to do is you're going to make small little pivots. Oh. Minding your hip precautions. So now when you're getting your legs in with your unaffected leg, you can lift that however you want to get it up and over the edge of the tub. However, now when you get your operated leg in, you just want to make sure that you're not going to bring that knee up higher than your hip. So what you may need to do um, if you feel like your knee is going to come up higher than your hip is lean back a little bit just to clear that leg all while you're scooting over. 
and then you're inside the tub and you can use a handheld shower hose and you might need to use a long handled uh, sponge to get down to your feet. So to come out you're going to just do everything in reverse. You're going to, again, you may need to lean back, lift that leg up, make sure you keep the angle of your hip open. You're going to come out, you're going to bring your affected leg out, and you're going to make small steps around. You're going to come to the square, come to the edge. You're going to put your operated leg out in front of you, one hand on the walker, one hand behind you, and slowly come up. So if you are able to step over the edge of your tub after you've had um, a total knee or a total hip replacement, you can use, if you feel like your balance still is not good enough to stand in the shower to shower, you can get an adjustable height shower chair like this. They come uh, with the backs and without the backs, and most of the backs are removable. And one way to come in here is um, if you're going to step in, you're going to want to sidestep. So um, if you need to, you can put one hand on your device, your assistive device that you have, one hand on the wall, or if you have grab bars, you can put your hand on the grab bar. And what you're going to do is, um, so again, I'm going to demonstrate this with a uh, right total hip. You're going to step in with your unaffected leg first. You're going to bring your right leg out, your operated leg out to the edge of the tub. Make sure your left foot um, has enough clearance to bring your right foot in. And again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you don't bring your knee up higher than your hip. So one way to do that is bend back. If you are on the, the short side like myself, you may need to come up on your unaffected leg, uh, on your toes of your unaffected leg to bring that leg in. And then you can come over, you can bring that right leg out, you can reach back and have a seat. And then to come back out, um, you stand back up, put hands on the wall or on the grab bar if you have them. Again, you're going to bend at that knee, come up on your toes if you need to, to clear to come out, bring that left leg closer to the inside of the tub, and then bring your unaffected leg out. Now let's take a look at home safety. One of the things that is very important to us is to make sure that not just that you move well, but also that you are safe once you are discharged to home. So make sure that if you have a portable phone or your cell phone, keep that within reach at all times. Use your reacher if you need to pick up items off the floor. Use your assistive devices at all times. That means your walker until you get cleared by physical therapy in outpatient to progress that assistive device. Continue following all of your precautions until you're cleared by your surgeon and if you do have pets, be aware, because they are very excited to see you and they can be a tripping hazard. Continuing your therapy after you leave the hospital will be important to continue making progress with your strength, range of motion, and functional mobility. Recommendations about continued rehab after discharge will be made during your hospital stay and may depend on your surgeon. If you need help coordinating your care after discharge, we can have a case manager, manager or social worker visit you during your stay. Now here's a list of frequently asked questions regarding physical therapy and occupational therapy specifically. The first one, I just got out of surgery, do I have to participate in therapy already? The answer is absolutely yes. Depending on the time of your surgery and when you arrive to the nursing floor, PT will see you either that afternoon or the morning after your surgery. Whether PT sees you the day of surgery or not, you can expect to at least sit up at the edge of the bed with nursing staff the day of surgery. The next question, am I going to damage my new joint? No. If you have any specific weight-bearing restrictions, those will be taught to you after you wake up from surgery. Otherwise, as long as you are following your precautions, getting up and out of bed will not damage your new joint. Is therapy painful? As we've discussed in great detail, it's unrealistic to expect to be completely pain-free. However, we will work closely with your nurse to try to keep you as comfortable as possible. And lastly, when will I be discharged from the hospital? Although this is ultimately up to your surgeon, it will also depend on your functional mobility while you're in the hospital and meeting all of your physical therapy and or occupational therapy goals. In closing, it's important to remember that you are your own best ally when it comes to rehab. You control your outcomes with the amount you, you participate and comply with therapy. While in the hospital and once you return home, do not spend too much time in bed. And while you're here, here do not refuse therapy sessions. As a final reminder, please remember to avoid driving after discharge and cleared, until cleared to do so by your surgeon.